Hi, it's Chris from Leicester Drones. A very exciting announcement. Uh, today we have received into stock the Fat Shark 101 drone training system. The beauty of this is it's a complete setup. So a lot of people have said to me, how do you get into drone racing? And then I end up saying, well, you've got to get a drone, you've got to learn to solder, you've got to buy some goggles, you've got to buy batteries, you've got to program it, then you go out and fly and it's damn near impossible to actually fly it properly. It takes a lot of practice. So yeah, racing drone, if you want to get into something like this, a lot of fun, you know, this will do sort of 40, 50 miles an hour. Um, anyone that knows me is watching this knows that I'm the worst drone racer ever. But you know, I keep trying. Then you've got to get your goggles. Fat Shark make really good goggles. Um, they are world leaders in this sort of thing. So what they've done now is they've made a whole drone training system. Really good bit of kit. You can fly outside, you can fly inside. So we're going to do an unboxing now just to show you what's in it. And then we're going to give it a fly in here. And then we're going to give it a fly outside. So let's have a look at what it comes with. I've not opened it yet. So very exciting moment. So it's the, the Fat Shark 101 drone training system. Look at that. Shark. Brilliant. Really good. Nice, um, nice little package, you know, if it's a present or something. Comes with the drone, the remote control, and some first person view goggles. So really excited. Um, let's have a look what's inside. Go Fat Shark drone training system. I should think we're looking at a quick start guide there. Very good, all in English. Looks nice and clear. Put that up there. Some foam stickers. I think they're new. Excellent screen um, wipe and some cardboard. I think this is going to be, there's two of them, I think they're going to be a stand because I do know it comes with two basic gates. Now these are, hey, look at that. These are uh, gates you can use uh, indoors. So somehow or other this fixes on there so you can practice. Um, outside you usually use bigger gates but that's suppose why you can't use these ones as well. So they're really good. They fold down, look quite small. I'm not going to fold this one back, so, you know, just lay off, God. So I'll put that over there. And there it is. There is the little beauty. Look at that. So you've got your four motors. Four props, four motors. Built-in camera there. It looks like the camera points straight forward. I don't think there's going to be a lot of uh, tilt on this. Um, and it looks like you've got the battery um, connection there. So very light. Um, I'm not quite sure. It's like a carbon plastic frame, but it's quite rigid. And then you've got plastic built-in um, prop protectors, and plastic sort of tail and, and uh, sort of fin there. So very light, so good for indoor use. There it is, and then you've also got the goggles. Okay, so you've got a, a strap, adjustable strap around your head, one that goes over the top of your head, some padding around there, uh, and that's your screen. Okay, they're not quite the sort of standard of you know HD threes or Dominator V three something like that, but they do feel good. Um, I think they're going to be quite comfortable to, to wear. Channel selector on there, you've got your normal adjuster for, for uh, brightness, uh, contrast, looks like your antenna goes there. There's a cable, I've seen the antenna, there you go, standard Fat Shark antenna is going to go on there, so we'll put that together in a few minutes and you can have a look. Uh, spare props. Spare motors, that's a nice little addition. Shouldn't be too difficult to swap a motor. It looks like you've probably got a clockwise and an anti-clockwise one there, so that's a really good idea. Um, 
I would guess that's the charging cable for the battery, it goes into a USB port. And let's have a look under here. More goodies. Look at this. Wow, the remote control. Yeah, the, feels nice, feels comfortable. Couple of switches there. So pretty simple, you know, to get you started. See if you like it. We're only looking at sort of 250 pounds for the whole setup. So um, I think it's very well priced. And then also in here, looks like we've got a battery. Uh, another one, that's pretty good. So you can have one on charge whilst you're flying. And then also some batteries there. I would think they'll be for the remote control and I'm sure the remote control will last quite a while. So that's everything, everything in the box, everything you need to fly. So far I'm really impressed. So what we'll do now is we'll have a flick through the uh, instructions, we'll charge it up and read the instructions, always read the instructions when you get a new drone and then we'll give it a fly around here. Super. So. This is the battery for the drone and it comes with a uh, charger, you've got a USB port on one end and a uh, plug for the battery on the other. So I'm just going to show you how to charge it, I've just read the instructions. Connect the battery up, go to a powered USB port on the computer there, plug that in. You have a red LED to say it's connected and a green flashing LED to say that it's charging. Okay, so we know that's charging up now, so we'll leave that there. When it's finished charging, it stays illuminated. So the green, the green LED will stay illuminated and we know that's charged. These are the batteries for the drone. Uh, they come with some string attached to them. And the idea is that you can attach the battery to the to the drone and then attach the other end of the string to something heavy water bottle or something like that so you can practice using the throttle and compensate for drift control on the drone basically it's going to stop you smashing the drone up into the lights when you first get going really good idea now i'm going to put the batteries into the remote controller to do that remove the back panel and then you've got four batteries need to go in. They're AA batteries. It comes with the with the drone, so literally you, you don't need anything else. Two go in that way, two go in that way. And then put the um, panel back on the back. There you go, that's your batteries installed. So the remote control, to turn it on you press and hold the power button, the green light comes on so you know it's on. You've got a switch on the top left, it's got three positions. To start with you want it in easy mode. There's a switch on the top right which is to start and stop your motors. Then you've got the left hand stick is your throttle and it stays wherever you leave it. And then you've got your and the right hand stick you've got pitch and roll and that one is sprung back to the middle. Also on the remote is a micro USB port. Okay so that's the remote control. So we've downloaded the simulator you go to the Fatshark website, go onto their training page loads of resources there telling you how to get started um, how to actually get flying with the uh, Fat Shark 101. Um, we've downloaded it onto um, this laptop. It's completely free. You need quite a good laptop, you need a reasonable uh, graphics card for it to work. Again, there's loads of stuff on there. There's training, you can do races, there's beginner mode, intermediate mode. We've gone onto like a freestyle thing here, so we've, we're down at the docks. You connect to your, the remote controller connects with, with the lead it comes with to the laptop and then you actually have a proper simulator. So I'm going to try to fly now. Uh, so I've got my drone, we've got it on the big screen there. I'm going to take off 
There we go, we're in the air. Okay, and I'm, I'm keeping it in the air, pushing the right stick forward now, flying along. I'm going to go up a bit, I'm going to make a banking turn there around the containers. See, I'm starting to go a bit high, which is quite a common thing when you're doing learning uh, to fly a racing drone. There you go, coming back down, giving it a little bit more power now. Oh, out over the water. Another banking right turn. Coming back around. Taking it nice and easy, not going mad. Back over the place we started from. And this is a lot of fun and it gets you working the sticks properly, like you will do when you're flying for real. Okay, you're doing exactly the same movements as you will do when you're flying this drone for real. Exit, okay, I've gone a bit high again. And then I can bring it in. Oh, bit of a bumpy landing. So that's something you can do. Practice your skills inside. There's different scenarios, there's different settings you can use. You have to um, calibrate the controller when you first set it up, so that's really good practice for you as well. All getting you ready for when you do actually go out and fly this thing for real. So now we're going to fly the Fat Shark 101 training drone for real. It's all charged up, we've attached the battery, and then there's a cord there which we've attached to a water bottle, and this will just stop the drone flying away, hitting the ceiling and whatever allowing you to, to practice keeping it in one place. So get the remote control, it's in beginner mode, make sure your throttle's down at the, at the bottom, power up the engines, and we're ready to go. So give it some throttle, and we're up. Really responsive, and I'm just practicing now, sort of keeping it in one place which is what you'll have to do when you first start flying. It is lovely, it flies lovely. Beautiful. Oh, oh. And just kill the motors there if you have a bit of a bit of a flip out. Absolutely brilliant, handles just like the real thing. So the next thing we've got to do is try and fly the drone through some of these uh, gates. So I've invited my good friend Dale over, he's um, quite an experienced drone racer, he's been flying around the garden, flying through some hoops and just want to get his thoughts on it, so welcome Dale. Um, Hello. What we've done, we've connected the 101 up to, up to a battery just so we can see the camera. Um, what do you think to the goggles down? Yeah, pretty Thoughts good. Well, for the price, they are good. It, I, I think it's probably 720p. What I do like yeah. about it is though, you've got yeah. an RSA, RSA, RSSI signal, try right. saying that with your own teeth, but it's the signal from the goggles to the quadcopter itself. So you should theoretically never go out of range. I've just had a walk away from them and it's down to about 10%, but it's still a pretty good picture. Yeah. Just a little bit of just a little bit of interference on yeah, the picture. Yeah. yeah. But the actual quality quality is excellent. Yeah. I've had a, I've, I've also had a fly with the fat shot. Yeah. So it connects up to others, no problem. Yeah, no problem at all. Yeah. And I can uh, see it. It's on there now. And that is a brilliant picture. That is really good. Yeah, I think they're um, slightly better quality than yeah. obviously these, but yeah, yeah, excellent for starter. It flies really well in for a big. It's obviously aimed at the beginner, and it flies really well. I struggled a little bit flying it, yeah, because we kept it in stability mode. Didn't yeah, uh, beginner mode. So beginner yeah. mode. Yeah, yeah. No, I don't use the beginner mode now. No. Uh, Hopefully, suddenly, when you take it down the club, yeah. um, someone will be able to put it in sort of acro mode yeah. and see how quick the rates are and everything. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. It's, it, yeah. it's what, what price it's, is it's it? two hundred and fifty pounds. Everything. It, it sounds a pound, and even when you want to progress a little bit, yeah. um, you can still keep that. But the goggles yeah. will still match any other. Yeah, because you've got a full range yeah. of. Um, Channels on it. Yeah, so you can use a, a proper drone. And light. 
I, I wear glasses, and when I normally use box goggles, I have to wear uh, these right. spectacles because I can't focus. But the focus here, the focus on these is actually fixed, and yeah. it, it's crystal clear. Could you wear glasses with them? Would you keep your glasses on? or? Well, I wear glasses for reading. Yeah. Yeah. Um, you won't wear glasses with your goggles? For those. No, 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 no. no. I, I can yeah. use these fine without without the goggles. You've got the the band, the channel, the RSI signal, and obviously your battery level for the goggles. Yes. Yeah, yeah. But I th the thing I really like is the RSI RSSI signal to the quadcopter from the goggles. It's not. It, it's similar to the RSI signal from your your transmitter. Right. But that is just purely the goggle range. The the range for the transmitter is going to be a lot further than the goggles, so really you should never get out of range on it. No. It says in the instructions it's about 30 metre, 100 feet range. Yeah, yeah. Obviously at the club. Yeah. You'll be able to check that out. Yeah. That's fine, I'm holding that. I'm just going to switch the transmitter off now, see if it's actually got a fail safe on it. I'm assuming oh, right. it has. Yeah. yeah, it's got fail safe anyway, so if it goes out of transmission range, yeah. it's just going to fall to the, yeah. fall to the floor. Yeah. And uh, You the, can also kill it it's in flight. Yeah, the it? LEDs are quite bright anyway, so as long as you're not in like elephant grass, yeah. you should be able to see that. Just put those motors on again. Tell us what you think to the sound of the motors, because I know you're always quite critical of that. Yeah, the, I mean the brushless, the, they're not brushless motors, but I'm just going to give it a little bit of throw. Yeah, there. I got it. Yeah, it's not nice and quiet. Not you pretty at all, are You do get. Yeah. You do get a spare set of props. Yeah. And two spare motors. One yeah. counterclockwise, one clockwise. Yeah. Uh, and two two motor protectors at the bottom. Yeah, yeah. Uh, we're just running it off a fat shot battery here, which is not the battery you get. This is the battery you get. Yeah, that's a two cell, isn't it? Yeah. Two cell battery. Two hundred. Maybe glasses on. Two hundred and six. Two hundred and thirty milliamps. And what I do like about the battery is, yeah, it just slides on the front there. Yeah. Bang. And that's yeah, it. Park it. Done. So easy. And it's not. A, it's just a um, sort of like a two-pin GST connector. Yeah. Really, really impressed with it. And the quality. Well, it's fashion. The quality is excellent. Mm. It really mm. is nice. It is what it is, isn't it? It's a beginner drone, but it's a beginner drone. It is a beginner drone. I would 
I'd like to see some footage from the club. I'll yeah, well, we'll get there Sunday. We're gonna, you're but I think in Acro mode, this is gonna, it's gonna go, it's gonna go. Yeah. Hello. We were just looking through the um, instruction manual because when we was looking at the quad, we noticed a little micro USB connector. So we wanted to know what it was actually for. Looking through the instructions, there's absolutely nothing in the instructions to say what it's for. We guesstimated it might be to charge the, the battery up or something, but um, what we did on the off chance is we've booted beta flight up and when we plug in it's actually a Fat Shark's own flight controller, but it actually runs beta flight. And what I did notice when we went to the receiver tab the the graphic representation of the quad was actually turning round slightly and if you notice the centre point of the sticks they're at 1519 which is correct here but it was still going round so just to stop that when you're going acro mode I've just put the dead band up just to 20 just to stop the drift on the quadcopter excuse my arm also as well maybe a little bit far advanced for the beginner if we've got the 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 arm button here is on the right hand side as you can see there but i like my arm button on the left hand side so you can actually change it in beta flight now if you want your arm button on the left and the mode on the right also as well in the instructions it says that is angle mode which it is in the middle it's sort of like acro mode but the 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 rates have slowed down and the angle is is restricted so i would probably call that horizon mode but it doesn't actually come up there and that is full acro mode but you can actually set that specifically to angle and horizon now rather than angle not really got a clue what it is and then acro mode So you can choose all the modes. There is also as well on the quad, there's two LEDs that you can see at the front here that you can program for your own colours. So all in all, from not knowing what the USB did to actually knowing, it works through beta flight. So pretty good really. So here we are then at the Leicester Drone Club to test the Fat Shark 101 with some real racing drones like this. <sighs> this is the real deal. Um, we're just setting up some gates. So the guys are setting some racing gates up now. So we're going to fly the Fat Shark. I don't know why I'm shouting because I'm on the mic, aren't I? We're going to fly the Fat Shark through these real gates so you can see how it handles for real so it should be good should be good fun he's known on youtube as uh, ir badger and he's got a real racing drone yeah another one of the drones that he's built and he's got you know proper proper goggles proper controller there's got a headphone attached to it <laughs> the real stuff so this is what you'll sort of yeah you're that yep. this is what you'll, pro you'll progress to when you've been using the trainer drone so what we're going to do is steve is going to take control of this and we're going to fly it through a couple of the gates so steve's just going to tell us a few of the differences between the fat shark trainer drone and a real racing drone yeah so main difference being which a fox spotted straight away are the motors uh, these have got what we call uh, brushed motors unlike yep. 
um, our racing drones, which have brushless. Which brushless, yeah. So, okay. whilst these will still be great, uh, outdoors you might not get full performance, so they are, they'll be great for indoors. So, as long as you've got a nice size house and your parents don't, whatever, don't mind you uh, crashing into everything, you'll be fine. Um, but they've got the prop guards on, so crashes don't have to worry too much. Also means that whilst you're not kicking out as much power, um, they all, they're safer. So you're less likely to get things in them. Uh, and yeah. Okay, cool. Uh, also the camera. Um, that's camera the camera's pointing forward. Yeah. So there's no, like yours tilt, don't they? If you, yeah, look, you fly like that, don't you? Yeah, that's something I, uh, that, that doesn't. Well, this doesn't have the camera tilt on it. No. Uh, which again, for beginners, it's fa absolutely fantastic. Whereas uh, you'll know, a lot of people you'll notice have the camera tilts on, so they fly like that, which gives us more speed. Yeah. This is just static, so you can only really go like that. So you have to put the extra forward momentum into it to keep it going. Yeah. Um, I, so looking at it, I have seen reviews that there are apparently ways to you can um, mount the motors differently, so you, they, they can have the motor tilt. But this is Chris's, and I don't want to break it. <laughs> Let's give it a fly. Uh, yeah. So Let's we'll give it a go. Uh, I'm not going to be flying with the Fat Shark. Uh, okay. Uh, goggles. I'll be flying with my own ones. Okay. Uh, just because I'm used to those. But I say I've heard, I've heard great reviews about them. I'm sure we can have someone ride along and see what it's like. Let's do it. And Steve's going to see. This is his first time he's ever flown it. So see how it handles. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Beautiful. Oh my god, I can't believe you're going all the way around. I cannot believe this. The first ever flight. Look at it. This is amazing. Look at this. First time he's ever flown it. Oh wow. There you go. We're in business. Look at this, look at the control of that. It's a bit windy. That is the real deal. That was absolutely brilliant, Steve. Amazing. How did it feel? Actually, yeah, let me come over so we can hear. How, how was it? I'm actually, well, pretty politely, I'm, I'm surprised. It handled really well. Uh, with the uh, brush motors, I was expecting more of what we call the tiny wood flutter. So they don't quite have the power to uh, punch out for the size. Yeah. But you know you're in beginner mode there. Yeah. You yeah. know it's got intermediate mode and another mode after I that as I, well. Uh, I haven't looked at the instructions for the controls yeah. or anything, so I don't really know the different modes. I was just flying around as I normally would. I can't believe you went around the whole proper racing drone course. Yeah. Because it's only got a range of 100 feet. Oh. So I think you were getting reasonably close to that when you went around. And yeah, you, it, what it, was the picture like? Uh, picture, uh, it, I'm not sure if it was just for me, it switched to uh, black and white halfway around. Um, but yeah. it was nothing that I can't really handle. Okay. It's, in some ways, black and white, if you can get used to it, it's a great way the to- The black look. and white is the when the battery gets low. So okay. the battery may not have been fully, fully charged up. Okay, well, so either way, it still handled really well. Um, it is on black and white now, I'm, so. I, there was no video breakup. It was it was crystal clear the entire way around. And yeah, I'm impressed. Impressed, uh, yeah? Yeah. Good way for people to learn. Yeah, so we'll, we'll uh, might change battery, we'll get some, get yeah, some yeah. VR and uh, we'll show you what it's like actually in the goggles then. Okay, let's do it. Dave, stick the uh, camera in here. You're getting a picture? Yep. Just gives you an idea, doesn't it? It's a 480 screen there you go just gives you an idea doesn't it yeah